Okay, this Rosh Hashanah Maimer started with the Pasuk Tiko B'chayid Shefa B'kechsa Yon Chagenu which is referring to the fact that on Rosh Hashanah the moon disappears you can't see the moon B'kechsa on the hiddenness of the moon Yon Chagenu that's when that's when you blow the shofar. So we learned that that means the moon represents Malchus, the divine power that's invested in the world. On Rosh Hashanah, that power is concealed, swallowed up in its source. And our vote is to draw it back down into the world again. Through blowing the shofar, Tiku B'chodesh shofar. Well, Shem Tov explained, why does it say Tiku B'chodesh shofar? Why in that order? Should it say Tiku, tiku B'chodesh B'chodesh or something like that? Why does it say B'chodesh straight away? To teach you that it has to be B'schachos. Your avoid has to be B'schachos new. Every, every day, every time you do a mitzvah, it's the first time you've done the mitzvah. It has to be done with a newness, with a freshness, as if it was never done before. And this teaching that Hashem Tov taught on the Pasuk, that talks about the very beginning of the year, to teach us that this is a yesodistic, a basic, fundamental idea, that when the world is being recreated, at that time you have to remember that every avoda, every mitzvah you do, has to be bishachos like it's new. And how do you do this? How can you approach a mitzvah as if it's new? After all, you did it yesterday and the day before. So the Rebbe explains through being misbonim, through contemplating on the fact that actually at every, every moment is a new moment. The world is being recreated constantly. As the Baal Shem Tov there, in Kasa Shem Tov, taught that really every moment is being recreated anew. And the only difference between nature, which is constant and a miracle, is that the miracle is just unusual. It's the first time it happened. Whereas nature, that every moment is being recreated anew, that's, that happened before. So we're not as impressed. But in actual fact, the world is being constantly recreated. And by contemplating on that, by absorbing that idea, that actually the world was just created anew, this moment, including me. So the mitzvah I'm about to do really is the first time. Because I was just recreated from nothing. It's a, it's a new entity. I'm not, I'm not the same being as I was yesterday or a minute ago. I'm a new being. So I'm a new being doing the mitzvah. And this being has never done it before. That's this boniness that's necessary by, by really appreciating that idea of the recreation of the, of the world constantly, then every experience is new, is fresh. Because it really is. Now the, now the Rebbe continues on page Ayin. The Toshin Zayin. The Friedrich Rebbe then continues in his Maima. The Maima from Toshin Zayin, 1947 which was 40 years before this Maimon was said, which the Rebbe said, after 40 years you can really understand your Rebbe. So we can really understand Toshin Zayin and Toshin Mem Zayin. So, the Friedrich Rebbe continues, The Pirish Kesser, who gam Meloshin Zman Umoyed, that the word Kesser, in that Pasuk, the Kesser Yom Chagenu, can also be translated as time. An appointed time. Tikka b'chayi shofar b'kesa liyom chagenu at the at the time of of the festival. And that's another translation of the word kesa, meaning that the yeshne zman u'moid mukbul lahamshich b'chinas amalchus. There's a very particular time, a defined moment, at which the Sphiros Amalchus has to be drawn down. Tikka B'chayi Shev B'kesli Yom is saying that there's a particular moment, a particular time at which the Malchus has to be drawn down into the world. can't be done any old time, whenever you want, whenever you get around to it, when you're ready. It, it is, there's a moment, there's a time particularly where Malchus has to be drawn down. That's, what, that's another interpretation of the word Keser. Zman Umoyed, a particular time. What does this mean? Yesh Levara Kesha de Inyan Zeh, Kesha Lashen Zman Umoyed, Linyan Rosh Hashanah. So we have to explain what, what does it mean to say that there's a particular time when you have to draw down Malchus? And what is that time? It's Rosh Hashanah. 
Why, why indeed? And what's the connection between the Aved of Rosh Hashanah and, and it being a particular time to bring down Malchus? We can explain this. Alpiteris harava magid hayadua. We can explain it based on a well-known teaching from the Magid, the Mazucha Magid. Shuv b'ruj ad marazakim hanifus besidrim dach shenich zali b'nei malan akoymo adnam so, which is quoted. This teaching of the Magid is quoted in a mimer of the Alter Rebbe, printed in Sidur in Daf, the Alter Rebbe Sidur with Chasidus, which was written by the Mittler Rebbe. Here the Rebbe wants to mention all the Rebbeim, it seems. So, he's quoting the Magid's teaching, which is quoted by the Alter Rebbe in his Sidur, which was written by the Mittler Rebbe. The, the memorandum of the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe said them, but he didn't write them. He didn't, he didn't write any of his memorandum. His memorandum was written down by several people, by the Maril, his brother, by his son, the Mittler Rebbe, by other sons, by other Hasidim, some Hasidic later also. The, the Alter Rebbe himself didn't write any of them. So, Torah Er, is Mamar, the Mamarim of the, of the Alter Rebbe that the, the Maharil, his brother, wrote down. The Kutah Torah is also the ones that the Maharil or the Tzemach Tzedek wrote down with the, the notes and the Haaras of the Tzemach Tzedek. And then there's the Siddur in Dach, the Alter Rebbe Siddur, which is Mamarim on the Siddur. And they were Mamarim that the Alter Rebbe said, but they were written by the Mittler Rebbe. And interestingly, it's like, it's like reading a very different author. When you're reading the Alter Rebbe's Mamarim as they're written down by the Mittler Rebbe, it's very different to learning them as they're written down by the Maril. Uh, because they, it's obviously not word for word, as the Alter Rebbe said it, it's, it's a Hanukkah, it's, it's written down as the, the hero heard it. It wasn't checked in the same way like the, like the Rebbe's Mamarim. And so... The Mithra Rebbe is very lengthy in his language. His relationship with the Alter Rebbe was like Chachma and Bina. Chachma is a point, and Bina expands the point. So the Mithra Rebbe's Mamar are very long, and the Mithra Rebbe's versions of the Alter Rebbe's Mamar are also very long and expanded. So the Siddur is, was written by the Mithra Rebbe, the, the, the Mamarim of his father, the Alter Rebbe, and in that, there's a very famous teaching of the Magid that's quoted in the Siddur. And the teaching is, after the brackets, Shazman Hu Nivra, that Zman, time, is a creation. Time is a creation. How do we know this? Where do we know this from? From the, the Magid. The Magid was the one who taught this idea that time is a creation. What else could it have been? What else could, have, could time have been? If we didn't have the Magid teaching us this, what would we think time was? What does it mean time is created? There was a time that there wasn't time. <laughs> there was a time that there wasn't time. What time was that? Well, <laughs> if Hashem created time, right. then it had a beginning. Right. So what was before it? Oh, so that wasn't time. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't time. It wasn't time. It was a measure. And is that an obvious point? Could it have been otherwise? Could there be any other way of understanding it? Well, until it's pointed out, you just use yeah. it. Yeah, even I remember hearing yeah. it for the first time. Same, yeah, yeah, same. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Right. So it 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 is actually a chiddush. This it is it is a an innovative thought that time began. We we see time as being background, mm. like in the background. Like it's not a thing. We don't see time as being a thing. We see as like time just moves along, like but nothing nothing moved. <laughs> if if there wouldn't be anything, there would be time. Just wouldn't make a difference. Before creation, 
we imagine there'd be a passage of time. Nothing is, there's nothing actually making time. It's not that because the clock is ticking, time is moving. The clock's just how we measure it. Right, that's how, it's, it's a way to observe time, to watch time. But the clock is really space, not time. It's, it's movement around a space. The time of it is that it was this, now it's that. So, so that's what a process is. But we don't, we don't usually think of time as being an entity, a reality, a, a, a thing. So trees were created. There were no trees, then there were trees. That we appreciate. Time, we wouldn't usually have thought, began. Because we can't conceive of non-time. Before, before there was time. So that's not something we can conceive of. If we have been created every moment, many time has also been created in moment. So there really is no such thing as time because it's it just stop, start, stop, start. Right, right. Our, our perception of time is, is like our perception of everything, yeah. as if there's this sort of flow. continuation of flow, but it's not. It's just that mm. it was created and then it was created. Mm. But even to say that, to say that, to say that things have been created every moment, time is already a part of that statement. Mm. Every moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so first time must be recreated, and then everything else, for there to be another moment. Mm-hmm. So, so time, time is a creation, but it's a, it's a higher creation. It's a Prior creation. The prior is just determined. It's also a time. It's a, it's a time. What did you say? Huh? Time. The prior is time. But before the Maggid, this wasn't known? So before the Maggid, there was this, this idea, um, but it wasn't agreed upon. Like there's a discussion, Rup Sandy going, mm-hmm. who this is like in the 9th century or 8th, 10th century, he, he asked the question, why did Hashem create the world earlier? Creation was, I mean, in his times it was 4,000, whatever, years old. Um, why did Hashem create it then and not earlier? What was he waiting for? Good question. <laughs> What's Hashem waiting around and then eventually created the world? What, what, was, what was he waiting for? What, what made him create it then and not earlier? So he answered also that no, there was no earlier because there was no time. There was, so there was such a concept, but it wasn't necessarily agreed upon. Muska, it, wasn't, it wasn't something that everyone, everyone agreed upon. The Maggid explained it, brought it down. So, so this man, time itself is a creation. Now, what does that mean for us, that time is a creation? On the, on the fifth line down in the middle. On the moving, so from this we know, Just like on Rosh Hashanah, the entire creation is renewed. As we say in our davening, the pasuk that this day is the beginning of your works, a reenactment of the first day of creation. That every year Rosh Hashanah is a reenactment of the first day of creation. That everything is completely renewed, has a new energy, has a new vitality, a, a new identity to it. Al So too, if everything is being recreated, so on Rosh Hashanah there's a renewal of the creation of the very definitions of time and space but and their existence. What's that? Because time and space are the two definitions of, of this world. That's what defines this world. That, that, that it is made up of time and space. So if everything's being recreated on Rosh Hashanah, not just the way it's recreated every second, on Rosh Hashanah it's being recreated as a, as a new, fresh entity with a with a different energy, with a, with a new energy, so time and space are also being recreated on Rosh Hashanah, are starting again. Hmm? I was going to say, but wasn't the world created on t- 
didn't time start before Rosh Hashanah? Is there a thought about that? Yeah. So, because everything did start before Rosh Hashanah. Because man was created. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to be that. So, again, time itself is being renewed on Rosh Hashanah. The very concept of time, of the passage of time, is being renewed and started again on Rosh Hashanah, on a new level. Which again is what it means that that on Rosh Hashanah, it's not just a new year in the calendar, we add another year to, to change the date. It's, it's that there's a completely new energy that came down, a personality. The year has a personality. Even time itself now has a, has a new... A new soul. It's also being recreated. So it's not like you're just counting years. It's like a new year is a new... Something just happened. It is new. It's not just that you could have made it in January, but we made it in September <laughs> sometime. It's that, that in January, on January 1st, nothing happened. <laughs> and if there weren't fireworks... <laughs> it wouldn't be anything like there'd be, there'd be nothing there like um, and if they decided it's not January anymore it's February okay like as long as everyone agrees it, it doesn't mean anything but Rosh Hashanah no Rosh Hashanah is a new year like it, re- it really is a new year even if you don't have a calendar so is it for the Goyim as well? yeah for the whole world so Kol Yitzur it says the whole whole creation is, so is renewed on Rosh Hashanah mm, why Why aren't they not? Yeah, kind of like why it should be universally I mean, yeah. celebrated. Like, how did it get to January, kind of, or whatever? I mean, they're all, all different people have different calendars. They, you know, like this Chinese, king makes it this way, one, one emperor decides that yeah. this is you know, the new year is going to be on his birthday. They do what they do want. Do any of the I am no about the Rosh Hashanah is no. I mean, I know it's the Jewish New Year, but I mean, do they know it has something to do with them? No. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say. Rosh Hashanah must have to do with the same thing. But then they have the year of the dollar, the year of the whatever. Yeah. I don't know what. And that just goes in a cycle around and around. And but it's kind of in a way that idea, isn't it? It's not. A, it's not a. It's not a new. Um, yeah. Not a new, new thing that comes that, that has never been before. But it is a different kayak, according to the Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. An, a, the, the year of the ox, I suppose, yeah, isn't the year of the dog. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's a different time. Right. You must have some. Yeah. <laughs> so when you look at a year, can you see like a unifying factor in that year? Sometimes, sometimes not. I mean, but there is, there is a thing that like, that was a hard year, that was a good year. This was an easy year. Like, like, it has a personality. It's like a person. Like, you can't define a person as one personality trait, but every person has a particular mood around them, a personality around them, and within that personality, there are several different facets. So. There's a person who is generally very upbeat and positive. They also have bad days. But their personality is still upbeat. So you can have a year that is uh, a positive year. Okay, on each day you had whatever, this experience, that experience, but generally the year has a, a theme to so it. So like when the rabbi would say this is the year missing yeah, the front or something, it wasn't just cute, like it starts with a nun and, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Like, it was the energy of the year. And the rebel would show how that's what the year brings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, sometimes if you read the, the Micht of Klali, the, the, mm-hmm. the letters that the Rebbe wrote to the entire Jewish people for a year, mm-hmm. sometimes that would be giving a hint of what the avoid is of that year, what the focus needs to be of the year. Okay, so, so time itself is renewed on Rosh Hashanah. 
The idea is like this. We're on eight lines down about after the rackets. There's a well-known question that's asked in the Torah and many other Mamarim. The world was not created on Rosh Hashanah. It was, well, it was created on the 25th of Elul. Rosh Hashanah is the sixth day of creation, not the first day. Rosh Hashanah, who Yom Vov Lemaisa Barishis, Yom Briyis Adam Arishin, the sixth day of creation. Rosh Hashanah was the day that Adam Arishin was created, but not the world. So why do we say this is the day of the beginning of your works, a, a, a recollection of the very first day? It's not the first day. It's the sixth. So the question is well known. The answer is two. So it's explained in the Mamarim. Indeed, the entire universe was created at the first moment of creation. In fact, the whole world was created on the first day. We talk about six days of creation, but everything was actually created on the first day. At the beginning, Hashem created the heavens and the earth. And it says, The word S means everything in it. Everything was actually created on the first day. And it was then sort of put into place, activated over the six days of creation, in, uh, bit by bit. But it was all created from nothing on the first day. So if everything was created on the very first day of creation, and not just the first day, but the first moment of the first day of creation, the and certainly at that first moment, time and space were created. How do we know? Sorry. How do you know the time and space were created the first moment of creation? Maybe they were created on the fourth day. Or... No, that's the first day of anything. Because you can't have the fourth day or the first day. You don't have time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, time, time came straight away. That, and space as well. Mm-hmm. The concept of space, of here and there, happened straight away. That was the very first instant of creation. There was heaven and earth. Two places. So space must have been created at the first moment. There's a sikha where the Rebbe explains, out of time and space, time and space are always intertwined. Mm. You can't have one without the other. One was first. So which one was first? <laughs> you think they must have come at the same time. The Rebbe shows how no, no, time must have been a, a bit before. Because space was created yeshma'ayim, something from nothing. So there was a, t- a time when there was nothingness, and then there was something. So time came first, so there could be a nothing, then something. But, uh, but either way, they need to come together. Like, to have time without space, you can't experience time then. Because a process needs movement. That's why a clock can measure time, because... It's moving around. This is the space that it covers. So space, so time without and space without time will also make no sense. Because what space? Space is here and there. So if I, I to get from here to there, I need time. I can't be in two places at once. If there'd be no time, I'd have to be able to be in two places at once. So then there'd be no space. <laughs> So time and space are intertwined. And they came at the very first instant of creation. Not, not during the six days. At the first moment of the first day of creation, time and space, like everything, was created. But Mikhail Malcolm, nevertheless, even though at the beginning of the six days everything was created, But the creation only came to its completion on the sixth day of creation when Adam Arishan was created. Only when there was a human being there did the world have reality. It, did its existence have any meaning? So therefore, specifically, the sixth day of creation, Rosh Hashanah, is called the beginning of your works and a commemoration of the first day. It, in other words, it is the first day. 
Because only with a human being does all of this have any meaning. So to say that it was there, yeah, it was there, but that it had no meaning. There was no, there was no point to it. If there wouldn't be a sixth day where Adam Rishon was created, so then the creation would be nothing. It, it would, wouldn't have any purpose. So that's why this day is also called Kese, the time. We said at the beginning of, of this section that the word Kese can be translated as Zman. It is the time. Rosh Hashanah is called the time. It's, it is time. Even though time and space were created at the first moment of creation, but time became relevant, became meaningful on the sixth day of creation. So that would make sense for the first um, Rosh Hashanah, maybe. But the following year, it would seem that the time to celebrate time would be on Chafhe'el when there's already people. Well, no, because it's saying that the, the creation is being renewed every year. Right, but when is it? At the, the time, at the time when, <coughs> at, at the time when time meant something. On Chafhe'el, time didn't mean anything, or creation didn't mean anything. But then, what's, like, that's the start of time, so that would seem like that's when it's renewed. No, but it's not. It's not the start of time. That's the point here. Time didn't really start on, on Chafael. It started on Rosh Hashanah, on Vav Tishrei, on, on Aleph Tishrei, when, on the sixth day of creation. That way we also don't change the year on Chafei. Yeah. Like we don't, we're, still, we're still, you know, Tav Shanayim Beis, Tav Shanayim Gimel yet, till, till Rosh Hashanah. Which means that the counting is not really counting from the beginning of creation. Yes. That's part of that year because that's the energy of that year. You're not just, it's not just happens to be that's year number one year number two, because otherwise it should change on Chafei. But it's like the energy of the, from the year that it's preceded. Mm-hmm. But it would just seem like once people have been created, then Chafei El should be the day that we celebrate time, because that's when it all began. I think, I think that's what he's saying here, that mm-hmm. the time didn't really begin then. Even though it was there, it was created, but it had no meaning, it had no real existence. So from time's perspective, when did time begin? From time's perspective, on, on Vav, the Mass of Mauritius, when an other Mauritian appeared. That's from time's perspective. Yeah. Because it didn't have any meaning until then. That's when its career began. <laughs> But one thing's happening in the, just the time frame, like now, like the sun was rising in the morning, and I mean, once it was created, but in the morning and setting, and yeah, like this whole system began to. But it was, but it was all, it was all, it was all to prepare for other mission. It was all, it was all, it was all done before him, so it would be in place when he would appear. So. So in concept, it had no meaning until... If Hashem would have cancelled creation on day five, <laughs> so then it, would, it wouldn't be that like, okay, so we had five good days. You know? like that's, that's an eternity maybe. I don't know, you know. No, it, it would be nothing. Nothing would have happened. Until, until the other mission came to bring meaning, and the Rebbe's going to go into that a bit more, what what Adam Rishon's role is, but by Adam coming, that's when it started. Or well, putting it in slightly different words, that that for the six days until Adam was created, the world was there, but it had it was not connected to its source. It was not connected to Hashem. It didn't, it didn't relate to its source. So it didn't know what was going on. It came along other Mauritian and made sense out of it all. But this is what it's for. So... So 
this is the last four lines of that paragraph. The Adam Harishin Paul Shlemis Bechalabria. Because Adam Rishon brought completion to the entire creation through drawing down godliness, Hashem's kingship, that Hashem is king, into the world. That's why his name is Adam. What does Adam mean? So the Torah says Adam means because it was taken from the Adama, from the dust of the earth, the, the, the ground. So he's called Adam. But in Chassidus it's brought that Adam is from Adam al Elyon, that I'm similar to the one above. Meaning that the human being is the one that is, that is connected with Hashem. The rest of the creation isn't. Just out of interest, Adam al Elyon, what's the source of that statement, Adam al Elyon, that I, I, I am similar to the one above? It was said by Nebuchadnezzar. He compared himself to God. Which was not a good thing to say. He made himself into an idol. And Kabbalah took it and said, well, he was right, just he got it a bit wrong. And so, in Kabbalah, Adam al Elyon is quoted as being, the reason why we're called Adam is because Adam al Elyon, because we're similar to Hashem. We're in Hashem's image. We're, we're an expression of the divine in the world. But the source of it is actually a corrupt version. So, Shehim Shechalukusi is barat lamata lasis lo yisar disbarat lebuch aftoyinim begidr hazman vamachan. Because the power of the Adam Rishon was to draw down divine energy into the world, to create a home for Hashem in this world, within the confines of time and space. That this, this world, in its definition, in its, within its limitations, should be a home for Hashem. That's what Adam introduced to the world. And so therefore, only then, only when he was around, did the world reach its fruition, have, have any purpose, connect to its source. So Dior Etachtain started from the beginning of creation, not at Arsina? Yeah. Seven generations banished the Shechina. Right. And then seven generations started bringing it back down. Till Moshe, who was the seventh, made it present again. But that avoided it already started. Yeah, when it says Ikur Shechina B'Tachtonim Haisa, which is Medrash, it means that the, the Shechina was down here in this world, available in this world. And Adam's Avodah was to reveal that in the, in the world. But because of his sin and the sins after, it made the Shechina unavailable until the seven Tzadikim brought it back down until Moshe Ben actually made it available to us through Torah Mitzvahs and Mishkan. So like two and a half thousand years is a really long time. Like it's like already half of like, and that just took it back to square one. It seems it's like half almost a world's existence. Let's go to the next paragraph. Mm-hmm. Just like it happened the first time on the first Rosh Hashanah, that Adam Rishon appeared and brought meaning, completeness to the entire creation, including time itself. He, he, time became a relevant thing, became something that is you can use to serve Hashem. It became a, a divine creation only on, on the, on, through Adam Rishon. So too, this happens every single year through the avoda of every individual Jew. And We are also called Adam because we are also similar to Hashem. Adam Elyon. We have this connection with Hashem. Meaning, every individual Jew through our avoda, we draw down elokus into the world, including into zman, into time, into the definition of this world. 
and we bring meaning to existence. But in fact, it's not that we are similar to Adam Rishon, meaning he is he really did it, and we do it similar to him. No, 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 it's the other way around. He was just a symbol for us. It says in the Gemara, the Fichach Nivra Adam Yechidi, why was Adam Rishon created as one individual? Why didn't Hashem create a nation? Why did He create an individual? <laughs> to teach you that anyone who saves one life is as if you saved an entire world. Yeah? This is a mission in Sanhedrin. The context of the mission, by the way, is that it's a speech that the judges would give to witnesses before they testified. To, te- to tell them if they were testifying against the murderer or whatever it was. So the judges would give them a whole speech about the sanctity of life and how important it is to save a life and how murder is so wrong. But on the other hand, putting somebody to death who's innocent is also wrong, so you should realize what you're doing. And a part of the speech was, do you know why Adam Rishon was created in one individual? Why did Hashem create one individual? To teach us that every individual is like an entire world. Because Adam was the entire world. That, that's the context of that. So the Rebbe twists this in a very interesting way. It says, What does this mean? The whole reason why Adam Rish was created as one individual, Adam the one individual who was a, a reflection of, of Hashem, is all for the sake of one Jewish soul. You get it? <laughs> What's the Maimon Chazal? That why was Adam Rishon created as one individual? To teach you that if you save one life, it's like you, like you save the entire world. So how does the Rebbe explain this? The whole reason why Adam Rishon was created as an individual was to teach you the power of one individual, which is you. Like you're, you're Nefesh Achis Misrael, you're one Jewish soul. Adam Rishon, the whole, his whole creation was just to teach how special you are. Like your, your power, who, who you are. So who's more special, him or you? Yeah. Nefesh Achas Misrael, one, one individual Jewish soul. Adam Rishon was created in such a way just to teach you who you are. Just to, just to reflect on, on your power as an individual. Why, why your individuality is so important. That you, that you are like an entire world. So it's not that we are like Adam Rishon. It's that Adam Rishon was made to be like us. Was, was created in a way to teach us how unique we are. Because that's what the Gemara says. The whole reason why Adam Rishon was created that way was to teach you that you are like an entire world. You have the power of an entire world. So he's like secondary to you. He's an accessory. Like a, he's an illustration of you, of, you, of your power. So therefore, our Avoda, as individuals, has the power of Adam Rishon's Avoda. Not because we're like him, because he's like us. So just like he was the first being who brought meaning to the entire creation, so to you as an individual, bring meaning to the entire creation through your avoda. And every year in Rosh Hashanah, that's our avoda to try and bring down that, that meaning. Let's explain a bit on the next page. Look at Ayn Aleph. Can I just ask something yeah. from here? So in the paragraph before at the end, um, it said about, so there was um, the Dira Betach Tainim. Was it different... 
um, the Avaida before? Wasn't it different, the Avaida before Matan Taira? It was different. So it would have been different, like, their purpose, kind of? Um, well, no, the purpose was always always the Dirbis after him. The method... Oh, the method. ...was different. We were given the tools, basically. Yeah. Even though it says, La'avda that Adam Rishon was given, the, was put in the garden La'avda to work at the to guard it. So it says, La'avda is mitzvah sasei, and La'ashamra is mitzvah loy sasei. But it's in a different way to us. Like, he had to just leave it in its holy state. Whereas we have a much more active role through mitzvahs. But the, the concept is still the same, Dirbat Achtoinen, a home for Hashem in the lowly world. Let's look on the next page. I know. For beer in Masham Shachs, Mount Hussis Barak Rashan, Shur in Zman Musuim Dafka, Vimavodis Shal Dafka. So, just to explain now further, what we've said is that the bringing down of Hashem's kingship in the world on Rosh Hashanah is connected with a particular time, Zman, and with the Vodis Yisrael, with our Avoda. That's what we've established so far in this moment, that there's a particular time you have to do it on Rosh Hashanah, and it's your Avoda that has to achieve this drawing down Hashem's Malchus. We know that the point of creation is to create a home for Hashem's essence in this lowly world. What that means is, what the, um, a home for Hashem in this world means that Hashem, as He is, has to be comfortable in the world as it is. In this world, with its definitions as a lowly world. It's not that the lowly world should not be a lowly world. As a lowly world, it should be a home for Hashem. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That, that the idea of Dirib Tachtonim, and the reason why it's such a powerful and revolutionary concept, this Dirib Tachtonim, is that it's not just saying that we have to change this world to be a home for Hashem. It's that the world as it is should be a home for Hashem. With its lowliness, in its lowliness. As, as it is. Hanu, meaning, Shagila the Kuslamata Dira Lois Barach, ye a big Gidre Tachtonim Dafka, but Gidre has man o Makum, Vasis Dira Ale Israel. That the home for Hashem has to be within time and within space, which is the definition of this world, within the limitations of this world, and created by beings of this world, by Israel. Do you see why that's a very revolutionary idea? To say that um, we have to go to another world to find Hashem makes a lot of sense. That this world is a finite world, Hashem is infinite, so you have to go somewhere to find it. That would make a lot of sense. Or to say that you have to somehow negate this world to make it a home for Hashem would also make sense. This world is limited. It's not, it's not a appropriate vessel to contain godliness. So you have to somehow work on it, change it, to make it a home for Hashem. That makes sense. The Rebbe Zavtonim is that the world as it is should be a home for Hashem. In its current state. All people came from Adam. Not only Yidin. So now it's for Yidin it's come out. Where did that... So, the Arizal says that Adam was like Yisrael. He had, the, he, had the, he had that din of Yisrael. After he sinned, there was introduced the idea that there's a non-Yisrael. That there's such a possibility. So the whole world is supposed to be even? No. Well, originally? originally? Yeah. I mean, the concept of a, of a yid, yeah. The, the, yeah, doing, doing what was. If it wasn't for the sin, that's what would have been. It would have been a very different world. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably better as it is. <laughs> <coughs> so. So again, Dirbet Achtoni means that the world in its finiteness should become a home for Hashem. Dirbet Achtoni, the emphasis is, there is Tachtoni. In the lowly world, 
as it is a lowly world, it should be a home for Hashem. So, therefore, on the times there, I'm shocked as a malchus the Rosh Hashanah, he begidra has man dafka, but they avoid Israel dafka. So, therefore, how do you bring Hashem into the world? It's got to be at a certain time, in a certain way, through people. Like we have to do it. It can't be Hashem doing it, because then that's not the Rabbach Tainim, that's Hashem. And it can't, can't and, it, and it has to be done in a certain time, because. If it's not done in a time, then time is not not being utilized to serve Hashem. If you think about it, a lot of Yiddishkeit is, is time bound. Mm. Mm. If to say the Shema before this time, <coughs> Shabbos comes in at this time. Yeah. <laughs> when, when Tisha B'Av falls through after, after Shabbos, so you stop eating at this time, you change your shoes at that time, <laughs> then you can sit on a chair at this time. It's all these time limits. You set a bracha. So you have to eat immediately after saying the bracha. If too much time elapsed between the bracha and the food, then it's no good. Um, after you ate, you have to bench within a certain time, otherwise it's no good. And you ate this food, you have to wait a certain time till that food. There's, there's so much time boundness. What's the parsha this week? This week is this parsha. Like the, this, it, get, it connects to this time. Today, which day of the week is it? All, all these, all these time things. Why is that? Because that is utilizing time to serve Hashem. You've actually made time into one of the objects that that you serve Hashem with. So just like we understand that making a mezuzah is taking an animal hide and making it into something holy. Or eating a Shabbos meal is taking food, physical food, and utilizing it for holiness. Doing a mitzvah on time is using time for holiness. You've made time into something holy. And so... So, figuring out when Rosh Hashanah is. So, when does Rosh Hashanah fall this year? What other week does it fall? You know, it, it's quite inconvenient. It would be much more convenient to just <laughs> a very set Rosh Hashanah. First weekend of, you know, after the beginning of this month is Rosh Hashanah. Like many, like like the way many Goyish festivals are just yeah. worked out, it's this, that, it's it's all it's all very clear. We have this whole complicated calendar and to find exactly when Rosh Hashanah is. It's a very complex process. Why? Because we're utilizing Zman for holiness. Time itself is becoming holy. But we used to determine time. Right, but based on a, a Torah system. That's, that's, that, that's the, the idea is it's Aravoda. It's Tachtonim. Time is a part of Tachtonim. And so it's we who have to work it out, and we have to utilize it for holiness. It over to us. Like, we have to... Um, like, when's Rosh Chodesh? Mm-hmm. It's up to us. Right. Because it's Aravoda. Yeah. It's... it's our vote is to make time holy. Now you can understand what was the very first mitzvah that Moshe Rabbeinu was told? <laughs> Measuring time. It's like it's such a funny thing. Here, here are the Yidden about, about to go out of Mitzrayim, out of slavery and everything. And the first thing she says is, hey, just, I want to show you how to work out the calendar. This is see the moon that's Rosh Chodesh. Thanks, I've got a whole nation here to organize. We, you know, when such a rush, we can't even make bread. And, and like, and, and now you need to now you need to tell me about the calendar. <laughs> like, to tell me about that later. We'll work that out some other time. That has to be the first mitzvah. 
the very first mitzvah that Moshe Benu tells the Yidin. Especially if you say time preceded creation somewhat. Um, it's yeah, it's, so it makes sense that no, it's all about time, but time is the definition of this world, and the whole thing of elevating this world is in its limitations, which is time. So time, making time holy is the what Rebbe it's all was about. very much with time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What time was Mincha? Three. Yeah. Three. Three fifteen. Three fifteen. Yeah. Three fifteen. You know, it's like yeah. fact. Now the fact that women officially are not um, don't need to do time bound mitzvahs. What is that? How can you explain that spiritually? Even, even though practically we most of the mitzvahs are time bound. I don't know. Think about that. Do you have an explanation? <laughs> <laughs> We're above time. The <laughs> shamas um, mustn't be caught so connected or in need of it. The lighting candles, I mean, it's all time. It's not practically. It's not practically. Yeah, I don't know. I have to think about that one. Yeah. The Rebbe said that the reason why also a Maimra has a Dibra Maskal 